the breed shot is just so amazingly hilarious slash kick ass. It's the peak of the whole film. Jason Statham is able to stab the shark in the eye. Then the shark decides to you know, breach out of the water, but Jason's holding on. Jonas is riding it with his, you know, spear in the eye of the shark and falls back and splashes into the water. And the effects work was incredible. It, you know, CG, photorealistic CG water and spray elements and splash elements integrating practical Jonas plate onto a CG shark and making it feel like it's interacting. And it was a lot of hard work. So we knew pretty early on that we were going to have to do a digi double for Jason. Not only is he seen inside the glider, but there's this epic moment where he stabs the Meg, travels out, breaches the water surface and travels up with the Meg. And he did a lot of his own stunts. We built on set a shark's head to scale, which he stabbed and he did a lot of his own stuff. But as we came into post and the shot expanded and became a much bigger thing, we knew that we were going to have to use our digi double and he was going to have to stand up to quite close scrutiny. We took a lot of photographic reference, full body scale, close up facial scale. You know, interestingly, you know, hair is quite a challenge on any digi double. Jason's shaved head, slight stubble on the chin, um, and, that, and that was pretty tricky to do actually, uh, to make that look photo real. You know, we literally sat together and had a photo of the real Jason and our CG double, and we'd be having crazy conversations like, a little bit of stubble here needs to be a little bit different, which is good fun. As a result, I think our digi double looked really great. Yeah, it's hard to tell where the real Jason and our digi double mix. He's just stabbed the shark in the eye and um, the shark is thrashing and he's hanging from it and we put all this work into the shot. It's a uh, water sim coming off the shark, blood, there's Ziva sim on the shark so it's um, muscles and skin are rippling. And the director came back and they said, we need to speed up the shark and make it move twice as fast. And we just started thinking about it and I was like, what if I animated the environment? What if I grab the environment and when the shark's moving this way, I animate the environment that way. And when the shark turns, I animate the environment that way. So I did it, I published it. The next morning we had back renders, we showed them and they were like, yeah, thanks, well done. Amazing turnaround. I don't think any other show has let me try crazy stuff like that. It was so fun. The place that we shot the above water plates was a place called Sanya Bay in China. And I found some, some reference of um, how deep the water was, you know, what the water levels were like, what the, what the ground was like, what the corals were like. We even shot lens grids underwater so that we could see how the depth of the water would distort. But everything that you see when we're actually under the water with a shark is computer generated. One of the challenges of, of this underwater environment was when we had shots that needed to be really, really deep. And basically we got Jason Statham and we got a big shark on one side and it's just before they have a big standoff, you know, they're about to attack each other. And our camera needed to be like 300 feet away from the sub and the shark. If you look at real reference for underwater, within 10, 15 feet, you start to lose density and, and depth. You know, we realized if we really wanted to shoot that, you'd never see anything that far off. So we had to, we had to cheat a little bit. We were able to employ the idea that they were in silhouette. We made out there was more light on one side than the other to sort of, you know, pick out a rim light on the back of the shark. Huge depths of water are not something that you would traditionally see in real photography, but the film needed that kind of depth, that kind of distance. We did a lot of research looking around at various films that were shot underwater, um, underwater footage from documentaries, trying to figure out what makes the, the underwater environment feel like you're underwater. And besides for the refraction or bending of the light because you're under a, a volume of water, we saw that there was particulate in the water that made it look like you're there or bubbles in the water. We've studied and found that there's thermoclines, basically varying temperature in the water, which creates 
a slightly different shift in the, the hues or the bending of the light, so you get these blurs. So our effects artists would go through, modify the image to kind of dirty it up, if you will, kind of give it all that grit and underwater feeling. One of the unique pieces of software that we used on Meg uh, to create our underwater environment is something called Sprout. What is Sprout, you might ask? Sprout is an in-house tool that allows us to propagate tons and tons of geometry across an environment. So what you do is you take your, your key elements for your underwater environment, which in our case was the corals, the rocks, the sand, particulate, and kelp, and you can very quickly cover a whole empty environment um, interactively, which was my favorite bit. So I could literally sit down with uh, our great artists and say, I want some kelp here, just in front of the camera there. Okay, let's go deep. I want to see a nice silhouette of this type of coral, or, you know, make this, the coral smaller. And you can scale it interactively. It's just very, very fast, very, very exciting, and, um, you know, very efficient way of working and rendering. 